Oh yeah, I can't full screen it. I'll beat it with it though. Okay. You can't full screen it in, in screen share? Apparently not. Oh, okay. Unlucky. <sighs> okay. So I can see it now. Um, so like if you click on the full screen in YouTube, it won't work or I that's what I just did and I just heard it turn screen. Okay, okay, on. that's fine then. We can do theater then. Okay. So just to like recap now that I'm recording Wincon here. Do you do you mind recapping it? Yeah, I can do that. Um so you have to look at your team and your opponent's team. They have uh Gragas, Jana, uh Lucian, Ari is their core. Because obviously Fiora is on your team, so like you're thinking at least Fiora split push. Right, right. So always, you section always. that off. Yeah. Um you're thinking Gragas, Ari, Lucian, Jana. They have a lot of disengage. Um, and a lot of things that prevent you from getting in and making an impact uh, when you want to. Uh, but Olaf is unaffected by disengage uh, to a certain extent. And so Olaf is really strong into those things where you're really weak into them. And Ezreal has the range to be able to fight outside of disengage. So he, to an extent, can have an impact as well. Um, so what you have to identify there is that... Uh... Oh, and Ari has the dashes. Um, which enables her to get herself onto Ezreal where he can play at a range. So Ari is effective into Ezreal. Um, so what you have to recognize there is that Ari has an ability to have an effect on team fights right. to, a, to an extent that you do not have the ability to have an extent on team fights. And that's why you want a 1-3-1 one, one, because individually, as you scale into the later stages of the game, Akali is way better than Ari. Right. But in, in composition, Ari has a lot better interaction with your team than you do with the opposing team. So you just want to keep her out of that uh, scenario. Okay. So cool. that's why you want to one through one. Gotcha. Um, Swain is pretty. Uh, he's pretty defense. He, he's 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 odd here because he doesn't really like he doesn't really have the range to help out. He's mostly a W bot and. Um, if anyone gets onto Ezreal, uh, he deals extra damage to them, but he doesn't really, uh, there's not that yeah. much CC to up with. I think the he only, like, valid role for him is just, like, kind of, he provides a lot of wave clear for, like, because Lucian and, Lucian yeah. and, like, Ari has to match me, right? So Lucian, Gragas, and Janna have an absolutely dog shit siege. So I right. think Swain I mean, just, like, comes into that a little bit. Yeah. And honestly, if they were going to play this perfectly, which they're super not, but if they were to play it perfectly, they would put um Lucian in the side lane against you um because that's way that's way more winning of a line than are in the side lane against you and then um Lucian doesn't really do anything in the one three in the three um, yeah, yeah. whereas Ari has the ability to just start some picks and has the ability to get away a lot better than Lucian does right, right. Um, okay but yeah they're 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 not gonna do that so um well they, they do it a bit but they also pull Janna um, when they come to you at the sidelines. Right, right. Um, but yeah, realistically, like, it should be you versus him, but it's not gonna be. Um, yeah, and then, and then Swain's really just there to provide extra damage however he can to use his root on people who dive in onto the Ezreal, but, like, he's not actually serving a purpose. Yeah, purpose. yeah, yeah, okay. Makes sense. Um, but, so the biggest thing, so another angle you have to look at is how do how does each team take turrets? Because uh, that's one of the basic principles. You win the game by breaking the nexus. The only thing you have to do to break the nexus is to break turrets. So that's the biggest thing you have to look at in terms of how to win the game. Um, if you look, neither team has any siege. Um, and their team doesn't have great split. Um, so they, the, their only real win condition is get Baron and pick. Okay, yeah. Um, and you know they have they have really good uh, Baron taking abilities when they're allowed to get set up because they have really good disengage. And so if they can if they can use objectives to force five on fives, they have a lot better odds of winning those. Okay. Um, gotcha. Your team also has poor siege, um, but. Fiora absolutely is the split pusher of the fucking game. Absolutely demolishes Aatrox in the, in the um, split push. 
So that means regardless of whether you guys have Baron or not, you guys have a way to take turns. Okay. Um, so really, your main win condition, the, the way that you win the game is Fiora gets the split push. And the way that you prevent them from winning the game is keep Ari in the side lane or keep them from having four people as a, as a unit. Um, cause like it should be Lucian. You should lose that split push, honestly, versus Lucian, but at least like slow them down. Cause Fiora is going to be better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I get, honestly, I get fucked pretty often in this game by Lucian. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's to be expected. Um, and that, you know, I, I, there are things to do your split push better. Um, but at the end of the day, like if Lucian's coming to your side lane, you should lose that. Um, okay. Even, um, even one-on-one you think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, like if, if Lucian's like incredibly overextended, um, and he doesn't have any opportunity to poke you before the trade starts, you should win that. But especially from the amount of gold that he has, because he has like six or so kills at that point in the game. Right. Um, if he can E to dodge pretty much any of your abilities, like if he can successfully use his E um, and kite you, you should probably lose. Okay. Gotcha. Um, especially because he can open with R2. Right, right, right. Before I even close the distance. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you, your goal is to fulfill your team's win condition by helping Fiora and Olaf get ahead. Because the Olaf, like, if the Olaf, he has the invulnerability, or the invulnerability to CC, but if he dies, it doesn't matter. Right. So he has, to, he has to have some sort of stable amount of gold for him to be a presence in the three. Okay. And then once he has that, he, he's overwhelmingly powerful, but he needs to have that first. So you, you want to make sure that he gets ahead, and then secondary win condition, or secondary objective for you is to make sure that Fiora gets ahead. Okay. Because obviously at the end of the day, she's going to be a better split pusher, but if Gragas gets up there a bunch and helps Aatrox out, Aatrox gets a bunch of early kills and free pressure, that's going to delay when okay. Fiora comes online. That makes sense. So so I probably should have taken teleport to try to assist that then. Yes. Okay. Um, but even more, even more so why teleport's important is your third goal, which is keep Ari in the side lane. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. And so if you don't have teleport, then Ari making a number advantage on one part of the map is a true trick. Like, you will get uh, more uh, split push, but she will get to create a number advantage on the other side of the map, and then they can win out on that side of the map. Gotcha, okay. Uh, whereas if you have teleport, and then you're in a side lane, if Ari goes to group, you can teleport and nullify the number advantage. Um, or you can also take the turret if nothing comes from that. So it's a lot... Yeah, like, she's okay. a lot more enticed to come to the side lane. So when I play against any of these like um, kind of like mages, like like when I play against Cassio or like Cinder, any of these champions that I kind of want to side lane against, I should just always be taking teleport. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because because otherwise you don't get to determine <laughs> what their tempo is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um, and then another thing is like in this matchup, especially you have to recognize that R is stronger than you early. Um, yeah. She's a very front loaded champion. Um. So that nullifies your ability. I mean, it doesn't really in this game. You play the lane really well. Um, but in general, that nullifies your... It, it starts to affect you towards the post-six parts of the game. Um, you want to have item tempo. Like, you want to have the first back. Right, right. And, and then have her still be in lane so that every time you guys are returning to lane, you are about a half a back ahead of her right. so that you can have rotation tempo. Um, because she's, she is innately stronger than you. So just having like the little bit of extra stats from those backs are going to be the real thing like in the post six levels that enable you to continue to roam to help 
out with your your win conditions. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, cool. 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 Is there anything else? Um, I think because I, I think the last thing before before we get into it is after the game, I looked at it and I debated that Electrocute might have been better just because like the pace that the the game wants to be played at, like with Lucian and Ari, like I can't really ever hope. I think with Electrocute, I can potentially attempt to like just burst Lucian, um, but I think Conqueror kind of like does kind of doesn't make any right. sense this game because of how the fights are played out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, first of all, you should not be thinking about the fights at all because that's where you lose um true and true. secondly um with that in mind you're not trying to be a part of any fights so conqueror is not what you want okay um because you're you're looking you're not looking for any sort of extended situations you're really just looking for um so, like you're not extended fighting you're usually 1v1ing and electric is going to be better okay i could have even taken team. fleet then maybe um for yeah. like lanes to sustain and stuff yeah if i'm gonna do that um okay yeah that, that all makes sense good 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 yeah. stuff um <clears throat> so okay we, we talked about the win cons of like getting olaf fjord ahead um because one three ones are are win con is is it a bad idea for me? Because I I actually went into this game with the opposite. I was like, okay, if I can get bot lane ahead and break bot turret, I can set the one three one as early as possible. So so that is a valid way of looking at it. Like breaking the turrets is an important thing to get the one three one going. Um, but actually. The turret that you most want broken to enable your 131 is mid lane turret. Okay. Um, because if you take the turret bot, that is a point of pressure that you removed from your split push. So like the, like that's a that's a turret you could take during a split push that requires your opponent to respond or else they lose pressure on the map. Okay. Uh, or and they lose gold and and that's a disadvantage and so if you already know that you're going to split push then taking any split push turrets <coughs> before you get to the split push phase of the game only makes your split push less rewarding um so as but like you do you do need to break one turret so that you can you can uh switch your lane assignments right right effectively but you want that to be mid lane turret uh in almost all situations okay and if it's not mid lane turret it doesn't matter whether it's top or bot so i could even like, really play for rift herald then if, if that's like the goal then yeah. to break mid um because that yeah. that actually satisfies both win cons is getting olaf ahead and um breaking the tower yeah this um yeah. this replay back is really glitchy uh that's right. I mean, I mean, so I think we don't even have to watch the full game. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of it is just not playing towards a win condition. Right. Really. Um, like you, you go for this aggressive style. You get some trade kills onto Ari. Um, I do. Or no, no, no. Um, you don't get the kills onto Ari. You make plays in mid lane around your lane. You trade kill for kill with Ari. Right, okay. Um, which, you know, you, I mean, you can see it happen. You can see what that does later to the game. It's not very impactful. Right. You have those kills. But Ari is able to use those kills to get um, more kills in team fight situations because she has a, a purpose, really, on her team because she could reach the Ezreal. Yeah. Um, you can't translate those kills in the same way. So you getting kills here is infinitely less valuable than Ari getting kills. Um, so and, and so like that's why I'm saying like we don't have to watch the whole game because that is the way that you're playing the game, and it's just based off of a uh, faulty premise. Right. Um. Whereas what you should be doing is just keeping Ari occupied that like if you keep Ari occupied and then you rotate uh to anything that helps and you, you actually do a really good rotation um that I think is a really strong part of why you win the game when you rotate to the top side jungle when uh Fiora and uh Olaf are 
moving in. Mm. Um, and you rotate first before Ari, and you're able to secure that double kill. Like, that really does a, a wonder for Olaf getting him further accelerated to the game. Right, okay. Um, so that they're able... Because, like, essentially after that, they play the game without you. Like, you go to the side lane, and then people come to the side lane to kill you. Um, which is the worst way to do it, but ultimately your goal is to keep them occupied in the side lane, and you can achieve that. Okay. Um, I did not put any timestamps. So, I okay, I, I guess, like, going into this lane, like... I don't I don't value Ari as like a, a very like strong champion. Um like I don't know I, I feel like I could have played this lane to gain an advantage better, I guess. Um it, I don't know, it was kinda of frustrating. I think maybe like the electrocute would have been better or I mean the thing like I I don't know that you're supposed to win this matchup. I don't like, like, I, in maybe. stats. It's definitely a losing matchup. Um, but I also like, I think that like I'm better than the average on Kali anyway. So that's that's fair. However, if you just look at what, what the kit has, she has auto attacks to be able to harass you on most of your CS takes. Um, she has an E response to your E, right? Uh, which you you outplay her a number of times with it, but just like kit for kit it is a counter to yours um her q outranges your q so theoretically she should be getting more poke on you um and then your w doesn't do damage and hers is auto targeted right so like could you beat ari in lane sure should you ever be able to probably not yeah Okay. Like not like not, not even like uh, it's like a hard matchup. It's like this is a matchup you should not be able to win. Okay. Yeah, I end up having to miss this huge wave off of getting poked. Should have gone D shield. Really troll not going it. Basing yeah, before I mean, mirror. Yeah, like like this would be a. Uh, uh, good lane to go D shield with teleport and then do an early teleport come back with dark seal yeah okay um yeah but like at the end of the day like this however this lane goes as long as you have the ability to be in the lane versus Ari in later stages of the game, your laning phase is essentially inconsequential. Because, like, it's just, like, compositionally, like, you don't have an impact as a colleague. Right. Um, and, and so, like, part of, like, you, you titled this Zero Impact Game. Part of that is, like, you are a very low-impact pick in this game. Um, and so... You, like your actions don't hold as much consequence as they usually might in a right. lot of different games and scenarios. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I went into this game realizing that, so that's that's mm. good at least to know. Because mm. um, then I can play like it, right? Like I, I can not play for myself as much, and I can play more for Olaf and Fiora, like you said. Yeah. Because, like, like, here, like, the big thing is not you getting this kill onto uh, Janna. The big thing here is Olaf getting the kill onto Ari. Right. I didn't even need to flash. I tried to just get away from Ari. I forced her to flash, though. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, that's fine. I think it's good. That was only just a two for one, so. Yeah. Not too bad. I would have died. I would have died as that, Jana. <laughs> I've been doing some stupid shit lately. 
through the game. Electronic fear in that control word. <laughs> I, it, it's funny because I pushed her off it like twice, I think, and then I, she just kept coming back. Yeah, I know. I was like, okay, you're level four. <laughs> I think I've been playing the game too long, like not ever thinking about win cons, and now it's just like completely coming back to bite me. Because now that I'm yep. trying to like get to the next level, it's like a huge bar. Because like I have these like kind of bad habit sort of like ideas about certain champions from playing since literally like season five, but I've never played like yep. seriously, so now I'm trying to like rewrite it, I guess. I mean, and like a lot of a lot of players play without Wincon. I'd, I'd say like probably all, like almost all of them. Like I don't think like if you think about it, like a D three D four player, I don't think anybody in any given game is thinking about actively thinking about a Wincon to like this extent. Yeah, I, I, I like some some might, but like those are probably the worst players in your Elo that are because that's how they got to the Elo. Right. Like uh, me. <laughs> Zero, zero um, fingers. Zero, no fingers. I think that's good though, because like having you to like look over my videos is like we're essentially polar opposite players in a way. Mm. Yep. Um. Right. Yeah. Because like this is this is literally the only thing I think about when I queue up for a game. Yeah. Because I know I'm not gonna beat anybody in lane. Honestly. <laughs> like, like if I do, like they're a mega bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Oh my god. Or if I if I do beat somebody in lane, it's because I just completely counterpick them. Really? You're not only picking yeah. Tark? Ah, shut up. <laughs> Good chance sometimes for that Tarek, idea. Sometimes Tarek is a counterpick, okay? To who, Pike? Uh, to, uh, to Leona. <laughs> Really? Not the Pantheon. Pantheon. Oh my God. Pantheon. Even though you stack armor. Yeah, because um, because Tarek's armor stacking. This is a good play. This is a good play. Um, so like you see here, I mean maybe your presence is even a little redundant. Uh, like maybe. I think this part's an int. I didn't yeah. realize they couldn't follow me. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you're still there, just trading one for one. Um, but it's not necessarily one that's like super valuable for you. I mean, still they get golden experience off of it, so it's not the end of the world. Right. Um, and it, it puts Aatrox further behind. Aatrox loses a wave there, so that that helps viewer a lot. Yeah. So no, yeah, true. that's 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 a big pot there. Um. Yeah, it it does not matter that Ari gets that kill. I mean, like, it, well, it matters more than than um, you getting a kill there does. But Ari is not a huge part of their win condition. Honestly, their win condition is so barely there. It's really just like play around objectives, and Ari falls off in the late game. Um, so it it just gives them a better opportunity to get picks, which is a uh, fairly random win condition. Right. Not very reliable. Did it freeze? Uh, no, it's good. I think? I don't know. Oh, it's loading or something. No, it froze on my... Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so like here, like, I, I think you shouldn't even go for this yeah like like even if you get that kill that kill does not support your win condition at all right okay what that does do is it gives Ari an opportunity here if she wanted to to go roam top lane yeah, and fuck and... up our win condition true yeah um like would she necessarily even get the kill there maybe not because Fiora is back in her turret I forget if this goes well. No. Uh, it does not. No. Um, so yeah, like this is you making an aggressive play on your own lane. 
that doesn't serve any purpose other than to maybe get you ahead. And you guys were both at full HP. The play was not very clear. Like, that was not, like, a very clear, like, you get that kill. Right. Um, he's kind of into you. Yeah, I know. Because he got greedy. But, I like, have no him. part of that play needed. Somehow. Like you see that, like, yeah, like that's kind of insane, dude. Um, well done. Um, <laughs> no idea how I love that. A worse, uh, six months and I get fucking insta killed. But a six months ago emo would have gone in on that yeah, right there. I was really surprised when Lucian killed me right there. I was like, what the fuck, dude? He's like, you can just, just do that. Damage. Yeah. Such a fucking cheeky Lucian Flash. I had Shroud in like one second. I know he's not timing it, so. Yeah, you're... This, uh... What's his, What's the champion's name again? Swain? Yeah. No purpose on the team. Win condition. He's just really good at him. <laughs> yeah. He just knows where to be. Yeah, he's just a little nuts. Um... Yeah, so, okay, so now that I'm thinking about it, I definitely didn't roam top, at like, enough at all. And I think, I think even, even, like, those roams that I attempted bot would have served better purpose just staying in mid lane. Um, yep. Just to, like, follow Ari potentially, but... Or, or going top lane. Yeah. Because, look, like, when you're doing this room... Yeah, like, they're fighting... And Aatrox is overextended past the midline. True, true. So like you like you could have been there instead. Right. And that would have been a kill. Gotcha. Yes, yes, yes. Oh uh, god. Yeah. Look at this look how long I've uh, I've shroud on that plane, like literally one second, dude. Fucking gross. Yeah, see it. So you're looking to make the play here now, right? I think we actually get him. If I'm not, uh, uh he, oh no, he gets away. Uh, I was I was mad at her a little bit because I was like, why wouldn't you just yeah, she bait went, it? She went a little early. Yeah, she went a little early. So, we so, so like that, him. yeah, but like that was that was essentially the same thing. Um, no, imagine if you went the last time and did that, and then he had to burn flash, and then you just this was the second time you do it. Right. Then he's dead. True. True, true, true. Um, what are your what are your opinions on Drakes? I kind of feel like Drakes are a total gimmick at this point. I, I think they're kind of worthless. Um, they're not worthless. They're just not as important as people play them for. Right. I feel like Definitely the, the not. default not. attitude towards like every player is like play bot lane because you can get dragons if you kill their bot lane or something like mm. i feel like that like <laughs> at least for like like brock loves to like um go for um <laughs> like suicide dragons kind of to like try to steal it mm. oh i want to go in on so bad oh i'd definitely go here yep yeah. i think i die actually mm. I remember being pretty surprised by that the burst there. Uh, Imperial Mandate. Pretty strong item. Yeah. I remember just not understanding why I died. But, um, yeah, that was not not very good. No. Um, yeah, and, like, most of the not very good stuff happens when you're playing for yourself. Right. I should, I, in this lane, I should just, like, understand that making a play on her is going to be too high execution and make the, like, easier plays top or something. Well, it doesn't even matter about the execution. It doesn't add enough to your team. Right, right. The, the payout is, is too low. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, Yeah, so it's both. It's both the payout. It's like, look at this guy. Yeah, he's kind of a psycho, man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Unassisted kill. 
Oh man. Nah, the Ezreal alt came in, but like almost entirely. Oh no, uh, oh no, Swain completely did there was no assist on that. You're lying, dude. I'm not, I'm not, rewind it. No way. Oh my god, no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> It's just nuts. Pretty sure I had the solution here too. Yes. Fucking blows. I hate dying eighty carries. Uh no, I don't do you int him here? Oh, I think I I think I just stop, stop his back. And then yeah. There are there are enough times where like that's a valid guess. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, so like now you start um, split pushing. This is where we can actually talk about something that would be effective moving forward when you come in with the right uh, win condition is that you want to time all of your splits as best as possible to Fiora splits. Okay. So you see Fiora's going back to base now. You got to be out of there. Okay. But like you are not, you are not the pressure point um, at all. Right, right. And then and then you just lost the member in mid lane. You don't have enough pressure on the map to split. Yeah. You just lost two people admittedly. Yeah, I do just base after this, though. I've been getting better at this. Um, I just take that and, like, get out, kind of. Mm. Now, now you see you're out of sync with the rest of your team. Yeah. Oh, this... Oh, wait. I think I maybe kill him. No, maybe not. No, you kill him, and then you die because you kill your flesh. Oh. <laughs> uh, not good. Which is... That's fine, honestly. Like any any ins any instance where you're going one for one is really not good or bad, right? Because like their win condition is reliant on Baron, so like they're not gonna translate. Um, like that's just pressure on the map that they're losing that you guys have an ability to take advantage of. Fiora can take advantage of a lack of play of pressure. You not so much. Um, the rest of your team. A little bit if Olaf can find a place to force, but realistically, like if they're playing with any sort of sense, they shouldn't be able to capitalize on it either. Um, so it's really just Fiora. Like Fiora is the only person who's like actually playing this game. <laughs> yeah. With any sort of sense, and then everybody else is playing TDM. Yeah. Um, except for your objective is to turn Ari into a split pusher. Right. And so, by proxy, you should be a split marker. Gotcha. Like, why is Ezreal's... This isn't it. Uh, why is Ezreal split pushing? Who knows? Oh, am I about to grief? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Like, oh my god, dude. <laughs> I mean, he plays it pretty well, but, uh... Running into the tower against an assassin on an ADC. He'll... <laughs> oh, God. Makes so much he's sense. Fighter. I mean... He's not an ADC. He's a fighter. How about this, right? Because I, I think... Like, I'm going into these games with, like, not the right idea in mind. And then, like, kind of haphazardly, like... Like, I do split push this game, right? But, like, I'm not sinking it, and, like, it's going badly. Um, but, like, I, I kind of get the idea. How about, like, can I, can I just send you, like, loading screens, like, when I'm playing, like, screenshots, and you just give me, like, the rundown on it so I can kind of get, like, into the habit? Because, like, yeah. I mean, this game, it's kind of, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just always this clear cut, but, like, this game, I just feel like, oh, if you're a split, like, turn that on. You know what I mean? Like, kind of, and then everybody else can just kind of mull around sort of yeah i mean i mean um so like the the parts some of it for me at least was like immediately apparent and then some of it was like i sat down with it for a little more time to get like really in depth as to why mm, so okay. like the, like when i look at this game the first thing i see is you're playing akali i look at gragas i look at jana i'm like you have a very poor chance of making an impact um, so like, so like immediately my first re uh, reaction was, there's not really much you can do this game. 
then I sat with it for a little bit more thinking about like, okay, like what could you do this game? Um, and so that's when I started getting more in depth about like what the rest of the team looked like. Um, like what your win condition was, was Fiora. That, that was also readily apparent. So I was like, okay, like your only job is to get Fiora ahead. Um, then with more time, I thought about what Ari can do and um, versus what you can do to counteract that. Right. You die again. So fast. Yeah. Imperial Mandate is like the best item to get. Oh, you marry up. God. Because it just, it's just like 200 extra damage to you in every combo. It's fucking nuts. Um, yeah, I, like with more time, I thought like, okay, like, what can you do to affect Ari's impact? Um, what, what is necessary to make Olaf the the value that he should be in this game? Um, and those are things that like you can into it over the you can like get to thinking about those over the course of the game that might not come with you initially um but like stuff like you should be able to immediately recognize is how the champion that you are playing interacts with the team composition of the enemy team okay um and the higher level stuff is your team composition versus their team composition um and then how you slot into that as a whole but you should always know how you slot in against the enemy team composition. Right, okay. Um, for sure. The, the ideal goal is to know your win conditions and then know your opponent's win conditions and then know the best role that you have to play between satisfying your team's win condition and nullifying your opponent's team win condition. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> really weird play here. <laughs> Yeah. They okay. Hold I, just, on. I just don't think why they had any it? idea. Why do they call this? Okay. So, Olaf double kills opposing team, and he's sitting bot lane. Uh, Ari goes mid. Atrax has already seen bot, so you know that there are only two people who can come here. It's Ari and Gragas. Um. And they probably saw Olaf go bot side, so they're probably not thinking about it. This is the, and you just clear vision, so you know there's no vision there. It's actually... It's weird, but it makes sense. Gotcha. Like, I thought it was weird too, but I just... I literally just real-time looked at that. Why, why there's no response from there too. Right, right. Just realize I'm trolling my Fiora by making her tank it. <laughs> I do zero damage. She does a lot of damage, but yeah. Honestly, <laughs> in this situation, um, probably should have given it, but. I mean, I, I think we were just so ahead that it didn't really matter with Baron. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter, but I think instead of giving it, it makes more sense to, um... Like, you should probably just go top, honestly. Like, in an ideal... Like, it should be Fiora going right top with the split push. Um... But, like, you guys don't need this dragon to win the game them getting this dragon doesn't win the game if the fight goes poorly then they can win yeah if they just took the dragon before you guys were able to get there so like they they just i mean they, they mulled just around in our jungle like for some yeah. reason yeah um so like you pathing there um was rewarded by them just doing nothing uh i would love to see uh, from their perspective if like <laughs> they actually didn't have time to do anything or if they were just like dicking around yeah um so I, I think they were sticking around. But yeah, like it, it would be better for your team to just get, like you should probably go top so that you, your rest of your team rooms to the dragon should be gone by the time they get there. Fewer rotates bot, they rotate mid. 
Um, and then by that time, um, you'll, you would have been at tempo with Fiora, um, pushing while she's pushing into their, uh, bottom tiers, you'll already be on their, um, tier two gotcha. in top lane. Gotcha. 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 Cause now, now look at the way that it's gone where you're just setting it up at their tier one and they're ending the game. doesn't matter because you guys are so far ahead. Um, but your split push right now is applying no relevant pressure when the rest of your team is, like, full pedal to the metal. And so, like, if you were already in position in top lane, um, this, like, it would be a lot more deadly and effective of a pincer move. Gotcha. That's kind of, like, ideal world, though, right? Because, like, let's say, like, if we could redo that play, um, realistically, like, my team's, until I feel like I get to, like, maybe D1, my team's just going to sprint to, to soul, right? If it's soul point, like, always. So, like, is it better to start the split top and just not be at that fight? Like, Yeah, I mean, if you're not at that fight, um, honestly, like, ideally, they wouldn't even take it. Right, but, like, like I don't... Like, they would recognize that, um... I mean, I'm not even sure you're needed... You're, you're needed for to, like, clean wipe their team. I'm not sure you're needed for them to get the dragon itself. Right. Um, just because of how far ahead you guys were. Um... And so... Because, like, yeah, you, you only killed Janna. Yeah, I got some damage down, though, on, like, other people. Like, I, I did Chung's Lucian, Chung's Ari. Yeah. Yeah, um, but realistically, um, yeah, I think Olaf there is too far ahead for them to like really contest at the dragon. Yeah, okay. Because like if they if they come to try and take the dragon at anywhere close to the confirmed kill range, he can just use alt and then go in on them. Um, and like they would like in that fight, like they were all spread out because you guys were engaging off of the dragon, but if the dragon is on the table, like, they're all in the same spot, it's not as hard for your team to, um, go in on them and do the damage that needs to get done. Right, right, okay. Um, yeah, I, but, like, that's, that's semantics. Um, that's not, like, the most relevant part. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So, so really, that get, like, you were zero impact because of the composition and those are situations where you should just be thinking about what minimal levels of impact you can make um and like as i identified this is my opinion but it is between these three things the order of that is one get olaf ahead two make sure that fiora doesn't get behind um three occupy ari Okay. Or Lucian, if they're smarter, uh, in the side lane right, for right. the duration of the game. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Uh, and yeah, you can send me um, whatever start screens you want. Um, you can you can ping me when you start playing, and then anytime I'm free, um, I can just be here to do it like in real time for you. Okay. Um, cool, and cool, cool. yeah, you just you can just work on the muscle. Cause that's really what it is just working on the muscle of, of thinking about it yeah all right good stuff all right. yeah i definitely like, learned a lot